Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 8, The Lost Treasure of Griffinstone. I only had two problems with this episode. One, I think it would have been better as a two-part. And two, Gilda's voice didn't seem consistent to me at all. It's the same voice actress who did it before, but it's like she fell out of at least voice character multiple times. Mm. My problem was that we just labeled an entire race of beings as heartless, greedy creatures because they lost a piece of gold. <laughs> well, if you noticed before, they were always heartless, greedy creatures. And then they got this really big piece of gold that kind of temporarily united them until they lost it. Yeah, but that doesn't explain the griffin and the, mis I think it was Mystery on the M Express, something like that, who had the eclairs. He was prideful, but he was not an insensitive jerk and could acknowledge the accomplishments of others. And if the griffins are all like that, why would the griffins even have representation at the Equestria Games? It was basically said in this episode that griffins are wholly incapable of working as a team. How could there possibly be a team of flyers if all griffins are these greedy, money-centered jerks? Well, I think it kind of, in the episode itself, it didn't. It said they were kind of like this, and they kind of changed, but they still have their problems. And that's why the friendship table said go here i love how disappointed twilight was I, I, all this stuff i read in these books i want to see it twilight would have been horrified at that library because <laughs> mm -hmm. that was one part i did like where pinkie pie's going maybe it's a good thing twilight didn't come i'm like you think <laughs> those books are in ruins literally that building's a ruin and the books are there <laughs> <laughs> though that does remind me of a funny image i saw it has a screen capped of Gilda helping that one griffin up and a screen cap of Pinkie Pie talking to the statue and image is basically had the caption of oop two new things of shipping fuel <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad to know that Gilda might have other friends who are actually griffins <laughs> at least she will now yes and it would still be nice to know how she ended up at the academy, especially if Griffinstone is that horrible. How did she find out about the academy? How did she afford to go if apparently she's so broke that she can't leave the town like she wants to? And considering she seemed to be the only griffin there? Hmm. That also brings up the question about how did she make it to Ponyville in her first episode where she ever appeared. She specifically came to visit Rainbow Dash. And if I was living in Griffinstone, I would probably go leave to see my one and only friend also. I'm talking about how she afforded to leave, not why she left. Well, that's one of the things that doesn't really make sense. It's like, you have wings. You don't have to pay for transportation. You only have to manage to pay for lodging. And that's only if you stay in a town. And that's only if you can't barter your skills to pay for your lodging. But the episode itself was pretty solid. Um, I liked all the little things, like the stuff with Pinkie Pie. Like I said, the only real problem is, it's like, I think this would have been better as a two-parter, because we would have had that first part that was mostly exposition, getting things set up for the, what I consider the main part of the story, which gets rushed in the last, like, five, ten minutes of it, where Gilda actually does the things that she does to redeem herself. Because I'm like, I wish we would have spent more time on that, because that felt way too rushed. At least to me, anyways. No, I think this would have worked better as a two-parter, and I think anything that's Table Tree Castle map probably should be a two-parter, because you're solving a big problem. Or at least spend less time on the setup of what the problem is, and more time on solving the problem like change the ratio because this time they spent like most of the episodes setting up for the problem and then they spent the last 10 minutes solving it it should have been the other way around you introduce the problem in the first 10 minutes meant first five minutes and then the rest of the episode is all about solving the problem and properly teaching the lesson and not just as people will complain properly telling the lesson to someone because that's pretty much what they did in this episode they went oh we solved your problem here's how we solved it now go and do that okay yeah because that redemption wasn't so much of oh i get it now it was here do this because we told you to like go give that griffin a griffin scone and make friends instead of wow being friends is nice i think i'll go offer that griffin a scone mm -hmm. those were my only real problems with the episode you know and the fact that to me that gilda's voice actress was inconsistent with the way she was doing gilda's voice because there were times where it was spot on and had the right curviness. And I'm not just talking about attitude, I'm talking about the actual sound of the voice, not the attitude in the voice. 
because there were times where it was like it sounded like Sonata, which is another character she played in the Rainbow Rocks movie, who has a very softer voice compared to Gilda, which has that kind of gruffness in it. And to me, there were just times where she slipped out of it and she sounded very smooth. I'm like, uh, even if you changed your tone, you would still have a bit of the gruffness in there. Oh, well, you know, my na major nitpick is the overall nature of the Griffins as described here. And why would anyone want to live in that town being all run down? And if it's all run down and nobody cares about it, back again to Gilda trying to make money, take all the books from the decrepit library. Books are worth money. Huh. So what did you like about this episode? That we finally got out of Ponyville and didn't go to somewhere else that was a pony population center that we got to redeem Gilda because you know how I felt about the lesson in Griffin Brush Off. I thought it was a terrible lesson. I like that Pinkie Pie was willing to help even though Gilda was the one who was mean to her before. Then Rainbow Dash was the one who was acting all uh stuck up and racist. <laughs> Going, one Griffin is a jerk, therefore all Griffins are jerks. And they get to the town, see, they're all jerks. Awesome, let's prove that stereotypes are true. Bravo. Doesn't sound you liked a lot about this episode other than we're at Griffing Town. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I, I should have known. By the time we get around to having another Table Tree Castle map episode, it'll end up being one I don't like. <laughs> I do like that they didn't send out the whole team. So this shows that sometimes only specific ponies are needed and goes back to my theory of, oh, maybe in the finale everyone will have to be split up. I liked how excited Twilight was about Griffin culture and that she was so horribly out of date and that she wrote Rainbow Dash a field guide. I liked how when she was reading the field guide, well, at least when she started reading it, she did the whole Twilight hair thing. Her hair changed to look like Twilight's and she was like, pretending to be Twilight. That was a pretty nice little scene there. Um, see, in here I thought you were going to talk about Pinky the Pie's hair, because that mane had a life of its own. <laughs> oh? She handed Gummy the whisk with it. She also used it to pay with a bit. We've seen it before, though. I know. I'm just saying that I like it. It's a nice little thing. They've shown it once before, and they've continued to use it, so cool. Which brings up some consistency, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And I liked how Pinkie Pie was in the middle of something that was going to take her all day. Then, oh no, it's the bat signal! <laughs> yeah, that actually confused me about this episode. It's like, okay, what's going on? Is this going to be a baking episode? And then suddenly, oh, butt symbol. Okay! Though, thanks to some friends of mine, I kind of had a feeling this particular episode was going to be about griffins. Because I have a friend who's really into griffins, and he's like, I can't wait for this episode! I'm like, stop saying stuff! <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope he wasn't disappointed. Nope, not at all. He loved it. To him, Gilda's now best pony. <laughs> Whatever, Luna is... No, I'm not saying that. I will not start the wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it funny how opposite we are? I'm Celestia. <laughs> Do not start the wars. Ah, <laughs> uh, so... Do we have anything else, or shall we start wrapping things up? You don't even want to talk about Pinkie Pie's commercial at the end of the episode? <laughs> uh, I remember it kind of vaguely. It was exactly like an old-time commercial where the actors would also be doing the commercials, so they would be pushing the product placement. Oh, about the baking soda, right? Yes. Yeah, I knew I should have watched it again before doing this recording. <laughs> It was about Pinkie Pie. I figured you wouldn't need a reminder. Well, I've watched other stuff since then. So have I. You know how distracted I get. Oh, look, a puppy. I don't know. Maybe this episode could have used a puppy. And didn't any of the Griffins think to go look for the idol after they lost it? Because apparently everyone knew it was that you had to go down into the abyss to get it. I think they have tried, but because... No one was going to give them any financial backing to do it. They, like, kind of tried and then went, Oh, too much wind. Nope. The treasure is made of solid gold. What do you need to get paid for? Get it back, melt it down, be rich. <laughs> so, anything else? I don't think so. I don't want to tear apart Griffin society too much. <laughs> so, what are your final thoughts? That the universe gives you what you ask for, but never in the way you wanted it. <laughs> Uh, well, I thought the episode was pretty solid. There was, like like I said, only had those two minor points. And then you come along and go, 
This is all wrong. <laughs> it just makes no sense. Uh, Based on the griffins that have been in other episodes, it makes no sense. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 8, The Lost Treasure of Griffinstone. Thanks for watching. If you liked our channel and want to see more, please consider subscribing and or leaving a comment below. Please keep it friendly. If you liked my art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with updates on this podcast, you can also find us over on Tumblr as well. If you really liked my artwork and wanted some of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description.